G'day, I'm Tim Thompson and today I'm with John Mellows finding out how they're turning a byproduct from the forestry industry into a biostimulant and a methane inhibitor. This could be groundbreaking technology and not only is it ready to go, but they're currently scaling. Let's find out how. <laughs> Now, John, um, this is the guts of the operation. You're investing in pyrolysis, which is actually a very old process, isn't it? It is. Pyrolysis has been around for a long while. It was used in the early 20th century uh, to make coal gas. But it's never been done successfully at scale with wood chips before, has it? No, no. There's plenty of people doing pyrolysis, but the scale, like, there's kind of a glass ceiling of scale. But with the process we've got here, we fix that. You've got some pretty special IP inside a couple of sealed boxes here. And that's right, yeah, behind uh, that black box Patented there. magic yep. that is allowing you to turn that pile of wood chips into some products that have a lot of potential to benefit the ag industry. Absolutely, yeah. Mate, let's meet Chad, and he's going to take us through the process of how the magic yeah. happens. Yeah. Chad, how are you, Hi, mate? Tim, very well. Nice to meet you. Let's get into it, mate. I can't wait to see this process. Yeah. So today we're processing wood chips which is a waste biomass material, but we can do any sort of uh, other agricultural waste like nutshells and almonds and macadamia and other biomass material. And what we're doing in this process is it's called pyrolysis. So we're heating that material without combusting it. And what that does is dries off all the volatiles and leaves us with carbon, a stable carbon material. So the material is coming in the top it's drying and it's going through this hot zone. We're not adding any other energy. The energy is coming from the feed material itself. So we can we don't need to add fuel or electricity besides what we're what we're using in the feed material. As it goes through, it's driving off all the all the gases and liquids, and we're then cooling the gases with a condenser, and that's dropping out our wood vinegar material that we use in agriculture for soil biology. Then what's left is the solids left is the carbon product which is the biochar if we use for agriculture, for stock feed or fertiliser, the soil amendments. Um, and that's it here. So that's a really high carbon content, 95% fixed carbon in this, but we can do various mixtures based on settings we use to run the machine. After the gases are cooled by our wood vinegar, we then, in this process, are burning our gases. So all the methane is converted to CO2 or moisture but in larger scale material will actually be making electricity or making steam and, and using that renewable energy for uh, other value added products. You're making essentially two, maybe three products here. Yep. Can you talk me through a little bit about what these different products are yep. and what their potential benefits for ag could be? Okay. Firstly, there's the charcoal or biochar. A lot of people probably have heard of that. Yep. Uh, it's a it's simply charcoal, uh, made from wood chip. You can see it there. Yep. Uh, there's been plenty of studies on it that shows it's a, a great um, improver of soil. And, and you can also blend, we could blend it with fertilizers, etc., to, to give people a, a biochar fertilizer pellet, if you like. Now there's obviously the advantage of water holding capacity and increased carbon content of the soil with incorporating biochar at planting right. or before or after. Yep. Um, but you're also doing some research at the moment with ruminants and you believe that this will actually increase the performance of the cattle while reducing methane. Yeah, there's plenty of studies that show that uh, if you feed it to the cattle, they give you less methane yep. and they put on weight a bit faster, which I don't think there's a cattle farmer who wouldn't like that. Your other product here is a really interesting one and it actually... I really like it. It smells really pleasant. Some people don't. It's I like believe. you've been around a campfire all night, hasn't it? Yeah, isn't it? yeah absolutely. <laughs> I, it looks like another product that I'm very familiar with too. But um, this is actually this... one of the grading systems. For you. <laughs> it, does it look like Guinness? Yeah. Well, it's got too much tar in it. Does it look like two is new? That's about right. Monday night compared to yeah. Friday night. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So this this is a, a form of vinegar. This is wood char vinegar. Wood bio char vinegar. Yeah. Commonly known as wood vinegar or pyroligneous acid is, is yep. a chemical name. It's full, chock full of uh, organic acids and there are also some other strange compounds in there, um, in particular a bunch of compounds called caricans. Now caricans are really interesting aren't they? they? They haven't been tied down yet but there's some thought that maybe 
they're acting as some sort of a growth hormone in plants. Yeah, that's that's possible, and there's there's research ongoing about that. So we, we, we'll watch this space and see if yeah, that's a true yeah. claim or not. We're also doing some research now through the University of Sydney at, at their Western Sydney facility, um, spraying it on the pasture to see what's happening with the methane in the pasture. Because there, are, in the pasture you've got obviously you're all sorts of microbes, but there are some that eat methane and some that make methane. And we, we just want to see what the, what the change is when we put on the wood vinegar. Well, John, here we are at Sydney University's Campbelltown Research Station. Yep. Um, and we've got some guys that are pretty clever that are trialling your product. Malad. Hi. How are you, mate? Nice Lovely to meet you. Bless you. How are you? How are you? Melissa, how are you? I'm fine. Now, you guys are an international contingent of PhD researchers here at the University of Sydney. Um, Malad, can you tell me a little bit about the work that you're doing? Actually, I'm, I'm looking for the grazing effects on yep. carbon balance and whole carbon cycle in a farm. Now, that's critical research, isn't it? Because a lot's been made recently, particularly within agriculture, of individual effects of grazing animals on gas emissions and methane emissions and carbon dioxide emissions. But a lot of that research is looking at the animal on its own and not looking at the animal as being part of an ecosystem. And that's where your research is different, yes, isn't it? Exactly. So I'm looking actually to, uh, to prove that the animals are part of that cycle. They, yes. are, they, are not, they are not something external that adding something into the cycle. They are, they are using that carbon or they are emitting that carbon that was part of that cycle. So I'm very keen to see how you're measuring methane production from pastures. Because a lot of people think of the livestock producing all the methane, but pastures produce methane naturally too, based on the biosphere of the soil, don't they? Yes, they do. So you're actually testing this vinegar extract that's coming out of John's processing. Yes. And early indications are that it's actually having a very beneficial effect on the amount of methane that's being produced in the trial. Yes. So Malad, we've got um, a number of boxes here. We saw that one just opening up before. Can you explain to me a little bit about what these boxes are doing and why they're opening and closing? Okay, sure. So we are using these chambers to measure the CO2, CH4 and nitrous oxide fluxes yes. emitting or uptaking by the pasture. So we have the sequence to, to measure each chamber individually Yes. So for 10 minutes. So this one now it's closed yes. so, and the, the measurement is a start from, uh, to measure from this chamber. Right. And after this chamber done with the measurement it will be open. Yep and then the next chamber will be closed for 10 minutes. Okay, so you've got vinegar treatment in four of these chambers? Yes. And four of these chambers are untreated? Yes. So that you can measure the difference between the yes. two types of pasture? Yes, exactly. We can see uh, what is the difference between the control and the, the applying the vinegar. What are the early results that you're seeing of the vinegar treatment versus the non-treatment? So we could see some uh, reducing the, the methane emission when yes. we apply the vinegar. But, uh, as I said before, we need a longer measurement period. Yeah, so you're yeah, measuring so over months yes. and uh, months and months, rather yes. than just measuring it for a week and saying, hey, it works. Yes, yes, um, exactly. You've got to do very valid yeah. research on this, yeah. don't you? It's too early in this stage that I can say it's working 100%, yep. but we need a longer period for measurement. So the biochar vinegar, the, the early, I suppose, assumption is that it's somehow changing the biosphere of the soil in some way. Yes. It's changing the bacterial makeup yes, of the soil exactly. so that there's not as much methane produced by bacteria because it's yes. bacteria that produce the yes. methane. Yes, and um, I think if I'm not wrong, I think it's, it's uh, affecting the methanogenesis activities. Now, Malad, these um, boxes here, they're pretty special boxes, aren't they? They're yes. only been used in research for th three or five years or something. Yeah, yeah. so this is, this is our analyzer yep. that it can measure all the gases at the same time per second. Now it's not a gas chromatograph so much, is so, it? No, it's not. It's working based on, it's, it's called cavity ring down uh, a spectrophotometer. Uh -huh. It's working with a laser method. It's quite different with the gas. So it goes to quite, 
quite a precise measurement, exactly. doesn't it? Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really, really precise analyzer. So this machine is a leap forward for this sort of research, yes. isn't it? Because yes, of its exactly. accuracy. And the big take home message is that it's not just the animals in the system that are emitting methane, it's yes. the ground itself and yes. how well managed that ground is depends exactly. on how much methane it emits yes. and that there are supplements now available that are economically viable that we can treat soil with to potentially yes. reduce that amount of methane. Yes. Exactly. If, if you leave the, uh, leave the paddock to grow, yes. it will not help with sequestration of the carbon. You have to graze it. You have to graze it because you will improve the photosynthesis of the pasture and yes. then it can uh, so Melissa, your work here at Sydney University okay. is researching uh, methane emissions from livestock in a dairy. Yes. And you have a very important message about methane emissions from livestock, don't you? Most of the time the animal or the livestock are blamed as only the greenhouse gas emitter. Yes. But they are also the part of recycling the, emi uh, the emission yes. to the plant yes. because when the animal emits the methane, yes. the methane is go to the atmosphere. That methane stays for 10 to 15 years in the atmosphere. In the scheme of things, 10 to 15 years is not long, is it? 15 years, yeah, yeah. one five. Then that methane is, after 15 years, it breaks down to water yes. and carbon dioxide. Yes. So here the animal is grazing in the pasture land. Yes. So when the animal is grazing the pasture, they are stimulating as the pasture grow. The plant to grow, it needs carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Yes. So that the plant gain that carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Yes. So that means the, em the methane emitted by the animal is come again to the, to the plant. To the plant. Because carbon dioxide is living in the atmosphere for more than 1,000 years. So it is very difficult to remove from the atmosphere. Yes. And the another important part of the livestock is also when they are grazing the pasture, they add their manure to the pasture. Yes, manure goes on down onto yeah, the pasture yeah, and fertilizes the yeah, pasture. So that manure is also important for the pasture as a fertilizer. That yes. means the commercial or the inorganic fertilizer. Yes. So that means when we are applying the fertilizer, the organic one or the commercial one to the pasture, yes. there is again emission from that fertilizer. Yes. But the animal are serving also through providing a nutrient to the pasture. So by managing our pastures better and using livestock to improve the fertility of our land, we're actually reducing human induced methane and carbon dioxide emissions from our management systems. Yes. Livestock is a solution for climate change. Love yeah. your work. Okay. Thank you very much, Melissa. Okay. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like this kind of content and you like those sort of messages, don't forget, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. There's plenty more on timthompson.ag and keep an eye on Melissa and his work here at Sydney University, as well as all the other great research that's being done in agriculture in this wonderful institution. Guys, I'll see you next week.